Hey everyone, me and your boy Bernie here, and in today's video, we're gonna go over a new Mattel UI component, and that is the rating component. While this component is new, it's actually one of the simpler components to use. They made it so that it's sort of very controlled in its use cases, but I'm gonna go over it, show you the different things you can do and all the different props, and if you find value in this video, make sure you leave a subscribe, hit that notifications button, because we're gonna have so many Mattel UI and React videos coming out, and make sure you leave a comment. I try to respond to all of them, and it helps unbelievably with the YouTube algorithm to get these videos out there to more people let's jump into it so the rating component it's sort of exactly as it says all it does is it shows you sort of a bunch of stars by default and by default it'll show five stars and then the user can go ahead and click on whatever amount of stars so let's say for example you're leaving a five star review for something you can click the five stars and it'll just go ahead and make all five stars uh, filled in the basic component for this doesn't have too complex of props. So for example, you can see here they have four examples. Number one is of a controlled uh, one. And all that means is if I look at the code example that they have over here is they are just keeping track of how many stars are um, actually filled in through a value that is just a state variable in their React code. And that's what a controlled input means. Um, essentially, whenever you click, uh, for example, the default right now value is two which means it's gonna be up to two stars but if I were to go ahead and change this to four you would see that it would change so that the default value is all um, four stars and whenever the user goes ahead and clicks on one of these new star values we just have a prop passed into the rating component that is an on change handler and that on change handler will essentially just set the new value to be equal to however many um, stars you clicked on so if I click on the fifth star it'll set the new value to five and all five will be lit up the next thing we have to know is that in order to get, read that value, um, other than just change it, you just have to pass it in as the value prop. So, so far we've gone, gone over the value and the on change prop. Now you can see there's also a name prop that will be within all the Mattel UI examples. That name prop is essentially for actual form inputs if you have this wrapped around a form. And this has to be completely unique, not even just to the form, because when it actually gets bundled up from Mattel UI, it will apply a global uh, generated ID to it. So you can see here in the documentation for this component, under the name component, uh, the name attribute of the radio input elements, this name should be unique. Uh, within the page being unique within the forms insufficient since the name is used to generate IDs. So if you have the same name, they're going to generate the same ID once everything is bundled up. So if you are using this in a form input setting and you have more than one of these, make sure that you make uh, a unique name uh, for each one of those forms. Now we're going to go over the next prop. So for example, you have the read only. So let's say for example, someone's on a movie review website and you want to see the review that the average critic has given this movie, the read only prop would be perfect for that. And all you do is pass in the, va um, the uh, value read only as a prop. The next one is going to be disabled, which is pretty uh, intuitive. Um, you can of course still give it a value. It'll just be grayed out and you just pass in the disabled prop um, for that one. And then of course you can default it to uh, the value to null if you wanted to have no value at the beginning and it will just showed as you can see at the bottom here uh, no stars and the reason that it's not updating when you click it is because for this specific example they never set the on change uh, for that no value one but if we go into this sandbox and we just go ahead and copy this in here um, and give this value uh, we'll set it equal to value and then maybe set the default value to null uh, you'll see here that under the no rating given, I can just change that and it'll change the state variable uh, just like that. So the next thing we're gonna do is uh, look at the precision. So the precision allows you to set the increments in which these values can be updated. So for example, you can see here, if you set a precision of 0.5, you will be able to set the value in increments of 0.5, which means you can do things like 2.5. Now, if you set that to 0.1, you would have 0.1 filled in stars. Um, and that's pretty much how the precision works. So depending on your rating system, how you're going to use it. Now, the hover feedback and stuff like that, um, this one's a pretty interesting one. Depending on where you hover, it will show a label. And the 
example is a bit complex. You have to make your own custom handlers uh, for getting the labels. So for example, you can see here they have sort of a dictionary where all the labels are correlated to all the different values. And then on the set hover, you pretty much set whatever you want it to show. And for the get label text, um, that pretty much leads to a um, a function that returns whatever value you actually have correlated to the dictionary. So it's a pretty interesting use case. Um, I definitely recommend if you are using it, you could probably just copy this example. It's pretty simple. Um, just know that for every increment and uh, depending on what your precision is, you're going to need to sort of create a map that tells um, material UI and your React component what you actually want the label to say. The next one is size, which is pretty counterintuitive. You can see here we have small, medium, and large. Medium is default, which is why in this example they never put anything, but it will just change the value of the um, pixel size of all the icons within it. Now, the last thing you really have to know about is the customization. So they allow you to customize what icon you have in there. So for example, in this example, they have hearts instead of stars. And if you wanted to pass those in, you can see here that in this example, um, they are actually passing in something called styled rating. And that is just a custom material UI component that they made using their styled uh, styling thing, which we'll talk about in another video. But essentially, it's just the same component, but they have styled it so that it applies these styles. And the only thing they've done here is they've specifically targeted uh, two specific classes from the API um, and their CSS. So you can see here that the first one they targeted is the icon filled. And you can see that if you pass in a styling, a global styling for dot MUI rating slash icon filled, it will apply this style anytime the icon in ratings is filled. So when it is filled, they apply this sort of color to it. And you can see that that color is like, you know, this like sort of a uh, uh, reddish color. And then they also apply a similar color, a slightly, uh, a slightly more hot pink color uh, whenever the icon is hovered over. So you can see uh, right now it's sort of like this uh, sort of this grayish pink, but when I hover over it, it turns into almost a red color. Um, and they are just targeting the global CSS styles for those specific cases. Um, and, and that's uh, if you go to the API and you scroll down and you see the CSX section, uh, all these global classes are things that you can target depending on the different situations. For example, if the icon is empty or if the icon is full or if you're hovering it or if it's just focused um, and stuff like that. So uh, that's pretty much all they've done uh, in terms of that. And then you can just pass in a material UI icon. And if you're not too sure about how to use material UI icons, I have a whole nother video on that. But um, and I will link that in the description below. But basically, all you have to do is import the uh, whichever icon you want. You're going to want to import the actual icon itself, which is the filled in icon, and then also the bordered icon, uh, which you can get if you just go to the icons list. Um, they'll have, uh, you know, uh, the um, here. Let's see if I can uh, show you guys really quick. Um, they'll have a lot of different variants of every single icon that you can go ahead and um, use. So for example, you can see over here, you can get the filled icon, which is normally the default, and then you can get a variant of the icon that is just outlined. Um, so that's what they've done here. They've made uh, pretty much the, um, the regular icon as just the regular filled icon, and then the empty icon prop, they passed in the icon that just had the actual um, outline of it. And that's pretty much all they've done. And you can also, uh, as you can see here, set it so that you have more items instead of uh, just five. And by do to do that, you just set the max. Uh, so if you set the max to 10, you'll have 10 items instead of five items. Um, yeah, and that is pretty much it. If you wanted to, for example, uh, make it so that only the selected value is highlighted, so pretty much a radio group, you can pass in this highlight selected only prop, and that will make it if the value is five, instead of showing all of them filled in from zero to five, it'll just show number five filled in. And that is pretty much it for all these props. And if you found value in this video and this cool component, make sure you leave a comment, hit that notification button and subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next video.